<laughs> so guys, today we're going to be taking a look at all of our Ashley and I's EDC knives. And I thought that because the channel is moving in a more EDC direction, I'm trying to do more everyday carry videos. I would take you guys over just the entire collection of all we have for different pocket knives and also neck knives slash this isn't really a neck knife but it's a folding belt knife so these over here we'll be getting into in the second half of this video but these are the first half of the video and these are all the pocket clip knives so and anything that has a pocket clip on it is going to be the knives we're going to be going over and we're going to be starting off with the lowest valued knives over here and in this first row here is all the lower valued knives and then all the higher valued knives are on this upper row here so that's how we're going to be taking a look at and <clears throat> hopefully you guys enjoy taking a look at all of these awesome knives and you guys can get some ideas to add to your knife collection and we're going to be giving also a commentary of what we think about each of these knives both of us because like i said this is our joint collection even though i technically got everything but technically it is also her collection as well as mine anyways guys don't forget to comment like share and subscribe for more of this Alaskan awesomeness. Dude. So anyways, guys, I'm going to kind of scrunch myself to fit into this whole kind of scene, but we're going to be starting off with this. This is actually an Ozark Trail, and this knife I actually received, I did not buy, but <clears throat> I know that people like Cutler Lover have done several videos on these knives, and they're not actually the worst knives out there, especially for being under $3. They work pretty well and they're overall okay knives but it actually is in my collection it's just one of those knives that's often forgotten in the collection because it's like I have this and then I have a whole bunch of really expensive knives so it's kind of like eh, do I really want to carry this no <laughs> because I have like some awesome knives that I would rather carry and take up pocket space because I only have so much pocket space that I can afford to use so generally they end up <coughs> with higher end knives but overall it is a good knife it's a really good knife for beginners and people who just kind of want to get a knife to have a knife uh, this is definitely not a bad one it has an adequate amount of grip uh, for people who aren't knife nuts they won't really know that you know tip down carry is kind of lame and not really liked in this industry but the blade centering on this is actually really good and the overall function so long as you don't use the flipper the flipper is really anemic but if you use the thumb studs it fires right and proper but overall, I like it as a good beginner knife. What are your thoughts? My thoughts is that I like that it's lightweight. Um, he is right about the flipper. Is like, as you can see, it's just the flipper itself is clumsy. You got to flick it, but the thumb studs do pretty good. But anyways, I feel like this would be a really good knife for just a, a younger kid or a low budget person who just needed a decent knife. And as he said, it's very cost efficient. Um, I really don't know much about this knife as I was only introduced to it like the other day, but like you said, it doesn't carry it much, but I mean still. I think for the most part, if you actually carry them, they're really good user knives. And what I like about them too is they're really great knives to take if you have a high probability or if you're one of those people that likes, or not necessarily likes, but ends up losing a lot of knives. This is also a great knife for you because it's one of those knives that if you lose it, you're only out like two dollars and 97 cents so it's really cheap and easily replaceable but that is the ozark trail this is i forget what this is but i think they called it like the ozark trail flipper knife uh, something like that and it's just a very basic name really generic but nothing too special anyways i don't really have anything in like the 20 dollar region except this more eldris that's about the only 20 dollar knife i have the only thing that i really like the next cheapest step up is actually this boger kalashnikov and this thing's around like 50 bucks i think they are around anywhere from 40 to 50 bucks depending on which type you get there's they make a whole bunch of these different things but this is a full-size boger kalashnikov of course this is an auto and overall i've not had this knife for a super long time but I've really been curious about the Kalashnikovs for quite some time. And for the most part, I like it. Putting it up against the AFK, which I'll get to in a little bit. But anyways, so, you know, putting it up against the AFK as far as fire speed goes, they're both very hard firing, uh, really nice knives as far as auto action goes. Of course, these are both, the AFK and this one are both autos. So check with legalities before going and purchasing an auto. But, um for the most part they're really good knives and this Kalashnikov is pretty good. Granted it is an Aus 8 steel so Aus 8 is not the worst thing in the world but it could be better. Uh, but yeah I, I, for the most part if this if I got this knife I actually got it in a trade but if I were to buy it I definitely would not be disappointed. Your thoughts? My thoughts were I was surprised for such a 
compared to the AFK, such a low-end knife, how fast and how hard it actually did fire. We put them up against each other this morning and we're um, firing them just to see, you know, which one came out first, which one fired the hardest. And they're actually pretty evenly matched. So for people looking for a low-end, lower, lower-end automatic knife, this is actually pretty decent. I, I noticed right away when he pulled it out of the box yesterday that it was definitely cheaper. It's like, like the yeah, handle the grips and everything are not like not like as high end or as nice as like something on a Spyderco mm -hmm. or a Benchmade. Definitely not like G10. But, and I mean, and even the steel, if you look at the steel, I mean, it's a little it's lackluster stable. and it's... It is an Aus 8 too, so it's not mm -hmm. the best in edge retention, but yeah. overall the fit and finish, I mean, it's definitely a $50 knife and it's a $50 auto knife. So what I mean by that is um, when you get an automatic knife, there has to be more to this than in a little flipper like this. There's actual springs and the locking mechanism is more complicated. The only other thing I'm kind of slightly concerned about is this pocket clip and because like clip. I like it too, except for the fact that the metal is like really, really flimsy and kind of bendy. I wonder if maybe over time it might bend out real easily, but yeah. I mean, ease, if it bends out easily, then it might be easy to fix, but mm -hmm. that's just the only concern I really have. I but know, I guess only time will tell. For me personally, I mean, I don't think the retention, having a lot of experience, I don't think the retention's too bad. I will say, as far as bending goes, it could definitely bend because of its length. This its is a weakest very point long, is like right up here. This is a very long clip. If you see, even this Riate uh, has a pretty long clip, but it's not quite as long as this Boker mm -hmm. Kalashnikov. So it could technically bend, but only time will tell on that. Anyways, it is a pretty solid knife and I do like it. For me, my pre-game expectations before I got the knife or handled it at all, I was expecting it to be cheaper than it actually was. I was expecting the firing to not be as good as it is, but this thing actually kicks out pretty good. So our next knife here is the little tiny uh, Spyderco Dragonfly. And uh, this is a pretty awesome knife for her. I actually really liked the Dragonfly for years and years and years and years and years but now that we actually have one i have to say i'm glad she likes it because i really don't enjoy this knife as much as i thought i would it's the reason why is it's just too small for me really i like to have a knife that's kind of like this bench made 5d6 that i mean this for me is about as small as i'll go you can see i still have just a little bit of room hanging off whereas with this uh, dragonfly this is it like you're choked up and i mean i'm just suffocating the blade and it's, it's really small it's great for fine delicate tasks and stuff like that but I really don't like the dragonfly I mean it's a good quality knife but for me it just doesn't fit the bill so I'm, I'm glad that she really enjoys it because I actually do not like the dragonfly as much as I thought as you can see it doesn't really give me that issue as much I mean I can hold it back here if I want or I can hold it up here on the um, chimping the chimping if I want and you know, I've really enjoyed this little knife. It's, it, like he said, it's really good for delicate work. It's really good. It's really, really sharp. I was surprised for such a little knife how sharp it is. It's wicked sharp. It's great at slicing. And too. it is really great at slicing, very clean slicing. I often carry one other all-purpose knife with this knife. This is just for smaller things. Um, I wouldn't want to use it for bigger all-purpose tasks, but for little tiny itty bitty things, I always go to the Dragonfly and I'm really pleased with it. It was probably the best Christmas gift I've ever had. Exactly right. <laughs> So I, that's, also, oh, okay. I also yeah. like that it's so lightweight, it is. but it's also like for being lightweight and so small, it's also really sturdy. There's absolutely mm -hmm. no play in it whatsoever. And it is, I mean, it's lightweight because it's small, but I mean, you can tell it's, it's good quality because it has a little bit of heft to it. And I'm also really pleased with the pocket clip. I haven't had any issues with the pocket clip at all. Yeah, I really so like good. the wire pocket clips from Spyderco. So do I. And I will say, I will give it some credit too for being so small, this bi-directional patterning, patterning that they have on these and the Endura, Delica, all of those is a really great pattern too. It's so, really grippy. So now onto the Senta Fonte by Spyderco. And this is another one that's newer for me. And this is another knife that I've kind of looked at for a long time and thought about getting. But honestly, this little Spyderco logo here is what honestly drove me away from this knife for a really long time because I thought it was gaudy and it was really stupid. And I was like, why Spyderco? Why? I mean, I would actually like the lines of this handle just fine if they would remove this Spyderco logo. But either way, once again, this is another knife I got in trade. So I'm not complaining. I, I definitely had the option to get this knife. This is one that I chose for sure. And I do, for the most part, really enjoy it. Oops, I failed there that time. <laughs> but for the most part, I actually really like it. It's a very, very lightweight knife. And it has a just about as thin 
blade stock as the dragonfly. So what that leads to is a really, really thin, slicey kind of knife, and it does a really good job. Of course, it uses the same VG-10 as made in Seki City, Japan, just like the dragonfly and the Endura and the Matriarch and all those knives. So it, it's really nice quality, even though it does not have um, screws in it, unlike these other two knives here. It has just fine lockup, and everything really does not need to be tuned. So sometimes people freak out when there's not, you know, um, screws in their knives like this or like this. People want screws so like they can take it apart, but for the most part, realistically, we're not really taking these knives apart. So I'm not that concerned about the pin together construction as some people might be. But for the most part, this is definitely more of an elegant knife. You can see that this is basically the Endura handles. So this is basically what an Endura looks like for the most part. So it looks more like a user type of knife. This is more of like your high-end kind of, or not necessarily high-end, but this is more of your elegant knife. For if you want a gentleman's carry, this would definitely fit that role. And I think be a really capable knife that's thin, slicey. It could even go into a little bit of defensive because this tip here does have a, uh, <clears throat> not necessarily sharp, but definitely false edge or kind of swedge on it that definitely helps penetration. We only got this knife day before yesterday, I think. It's, it's fairly new. I haven't really gotten a lot of experience with it, but I do look forward to using it more in the future. I'm liking the chimping here, right here. You know, I mean, there's not a whole lot of grip on the handle like there is on these, but it's not horribly bad. I mean, it fits pretty comfortable, but it's like, I'm glad I have this, you know. Mm -hmm. But anyways, I really liked how it looked when I first saw it. I was like, it's very elegant. It's mm -hmm. very it's definitely a gentleman's thin. folder. Although the funny part is, for pound for pound, this is almost as heavy, if not heavier, yeah. than this. Which I find kind of hilarious. But this is definitely just an elegant, thin knife. Nice. And honestly, I don't mind the Spider Co. Maybe it's because I'm a girl and I don't care if it looks gaudy because it really does not look that bad. It doesn't look that bad. It just looks like, in comparison to this Endura <laughs> handle, it like I like this kind of low profile. It's not really screaming I got you. its name. I got you. But uh, that, it's just like shiny, silver looking, and you know. But anyway, I like this knife and I thought it was cool to add another Spider Co. to the collection. And because someone I'll is probably... a spidey addict over here. Someone just loves Spider Co. Ironically, also an arachnophobia in real life. But seriously though, this is not a really, this is not a bad knife and I wouldn't mind carrying it. Um, I'm going to carry it more. Like mm -hmm. I mentioned with the Dragonfly, I like to have another all-purpose knife on hand. Mm -hmm. And I might try this for a while and see how it goes and I'll keep you guys updated. But I'm yeah, pretty excited about using this Definitely knife. reviews to come on all of these knives that have not been reviewed. None of these mm -hmm. knives here have been reviewed. Reviews to come on all of these. Probably not this one. But <laughs> That one's been <laughs> reviewed and re-reviewed and featured over and well, over again. Well, it's had a lot of overviews. Never really any reviews. But anyways, now to the Spyderco Matriarch. And this is Matriarch 2 with the wave feature, of course. Lots of wetness on this thing. <laughs> but anywho, so this is the Matriarch. And this, there's not a whole lot to talk about because it's really more of a defensive option than it is a knife but uh, really Ashley has more to say on it because I have not really carried this thing or messed around with it too much because it's really been her knife. I carry it constantly and he hardly gets any time in edge wise because well, I that's because him. that's really you need it more than me because I carry Probably. guns more but not not recently oh maybe a little bit but Anywho. not in days to come anyways guys i really am pleased with the matriarch like i've said multiple times before and like he just touched on now i do not use this for any all-purpose work this is strictly for defense but i'm really glad i have it i'm continually impressed with the different ways i found i can carry it the different ways i can find to activate the wave feature and snap it out really quick and bring it up to slash and everything it's like it's just a one-time deal kind of knife. It's like that commercial, and I don't remember what company it is, but it's like, we hope you never need you, but we're there if you do. You know, this is that kind of a knife. But I just am continually impressed with just how beautiful and savage it is, but also how effective it is. And I, on one hand, I'm kind of curious to test it out, but on the other hand, I, I really don't want to go that route. But <laughs> anyways, guys, that's really all I can say about the Matriarch is it's holding up like a champ, and I'm really, really pleased to have it. It's overall a really great knife. It has a lot of the same awesome uh, ergonomic features that sound like the Dragonfly has mm -hmm. with a bi-directional patterning, patterning mm -hmm. and overall just really It will awesome. not slip out of your grip at no, all. No, and that's a really nice thing for that's a defensive a good thing. knife. So now on to possibly one of my most loved knives on the table, or at least it was. Um, it's kind of being replaced a little bit, but this is the Benchmade 56 and 
this has been a really daily workhorse for me for many years. It's only recently kind of been just a little phased out. Obviously, we have a huge rotation here, <laughs> so we, we try and rotate everything in, but um, for the most part, it's not getting as much pocket time, but it's a really great, awesome, just small folder. Once again, this is about as small as I like to go, but when I want a small folder that's super capable because the blade length or the blade to handle ratio is really good on this knife. Benchmade took advantage of having a lot of blade to handle on this. And so that makes it a really small knife, but yet a really, really capable knife. And that's something that I just love. Every time I use this knife, it feels like it's actually a larger knife than it really is because the capabilities of the blade, the way it, <clears throat> it penetrates into things and just slices open boxes and all that awesome stuff. I do want to note that I have modded it, of course, to have a deep carry clip. And I got another one because this knife has a deep carry clip. And now this one has to have a deep carry clip because I swear the deep carry clips, if you guys don't already know, they're like a necessity on all Benchmades. So if you want one, definitely ask Benchmade because they'll hook you up with them. But that is the only thing I've done. And it's really, I love that deep carry clip because it buries the knife in your pocket. I lovingly nicknamed this knife the survival kit knife because when I was first introduced to it, he had it in either one survival kit or another. Anyways, I've used it a little tiny bit, not a whole lot, um, but I'm pretty pleased with it. I mean, I like the Dragonfly a little bit better, but it's a pretty good knife. I like Benchmade as well. I do recommend the deep carry clip. It's, it's a really good all-purpose. It's a great knife. It, it really is. It's, it's, it's adorable. That's all I got to say about that. <laughs> Okay, so now moving on to the full size grip. This is actually my first Benchmade and my oldest Benchmade. And uh, I really love this thing. This is the 05, or not 0550. This is just the 550 by Benchmade. And uh, it's a really awesome knife. Of course, this one is just rocking a lanyard for just a different style of carry. It doesn't really have, it has a pocket clip, but it's not on this knife. But this one, I don't carry to it too much anymore because it's just a real beat up knife. This one That's and the one I'm about to show are like my beater knives. They're kind of like higher end beater knives. So uh, take that for what you will. But these are knives that see a lot of use and they're moderately expensive. Both of these, uh, that one more expensive than this one, but they're really just good all around workhorses. And if once again, I want a knife that is reliable and I know I can thump on, or I know I can really put it into a serious situation, it's not gonna fail me. Cause that's kind of like this knife right here. It's like, I don't know how much it can take. It's a nice knife to go for for a beater but it also may fail on you whereas these two knives are really solid and <clears throat> i know they're not going to fail on me so anyways don't have a whole lot to say other than this is just a really awesome workhorse of course i got this one when i was new to knives and thought black and serrations were really cool <laughs> now i've kind of changed as you guys can see with like straight edge straight edge straight edge straight edge even this is a straight edge everything tends to be a straight edge nowadays except a handful of knives this one this one and this one are the only serrations ones I believe on this table but overall it's a really great workhorse so from what I've been told it seems like this knife has held up pretty well because I mean he's been carrying it for a lot of years um, I don't have really any experience with this knife except for just messing with it a little bit in the house or whatever but um, it reminds me honestly when I saw the black blade in the serrations it was like an automatic ew because I had a Gerber and it was the worst knife I ever had. And it was blacked out with the serrations. And I saw this and I'm like, ew, no way, bro. What the heck? What, what, what is this? What is but this it's trash? A pretty good knife. But stuff. honestly, Benchmade and Gerber, back then I didn't know the difference, which is astronomical. I didn't know that Benchmade is such an amazing brand and that Gerber is just, well, trash. So, <laughs> <They're trying laughs> anyways, to guys, I think us. I gotta say this is the most unique knife on the table because of its blacked out blade and serrations, and because of its lanyard instead of a clip, and because of its green, green hand. handle. Yeah. But it's it's a pretty cool knife. I've I've like I've said I've never really used it except just playing with it a little bit. But it seems like it's held up pretty well. And like he said, it's a beater. It's the true beater with a heater. <laughs> Possibly. This is probably the most beat knife <laughs> on the table. This one I this still really though. liked and it's a pretty awesome knife for those who don't know this shape. This is obviously a Microtech SOCOM Elite. This is an old SOCOM Elite. <laughs> it's it's beat very tech. beat up. It's very, very beat up, but it's a 2006 Microtech SOCOM Elite, obviously a manual action. They do make some of these in autos, but this is a manual action D2 blade. And this is basically my high-end beater 
because <clears throat> I know this one's not gonna fail. It's been around forever. Like this thing's been around 11 years now and it just works really well. Obviously serrations on it. And this is a chisel grind blade that has a lot of its coating missing and all of its coating missing on this side because it's been resharpened a handful of times as you guys as can you probably can don't see. definitely see. But it's a Tanto as well. This is actually I think the only Tanto on the table, unless you count like this, they kind of say that this is a modified Tanto. But oh, really? aside from that, if you count like this is the only true Tanto blade on the table, but it's a really awesome knife, even as in its beat form. The grip on this and ergonomics are still really superb. It's an excellent knife for being a liner lock. And uh, yeah, it's just a really great workhorse knife. Now, the only thing I really don't like about this knife is just like this one, it is a tip down carry. I really don't like tip down carry knives. Uh, it's just, I mean, you guys can see the pattern on this table. This is, this one and this one are legitimately the only two tip down carry knives on the table. So um, all of my experience and real preference comes from tip up carry. So it kind of feels weird, but. When I first saw this knife, the first thing that popped in my mind was like, Matthew, you need to ask the guy, how many people have you killed with this thing? Because we were, we were supposing all kinds of cool stuff. Like, oh, maybe it was an Iraq deployment knife. And it very may, well may have been, but the probably person was. we bought it from didn't use it much. So whoever he got it from probably did. Yeah. What I like the most is little handy dandy glass breaking feature. There's a carbide feature. tipped uh, glass breaker. This yeah. is a Microtech, and Microtechs like to have glass breakers on their As knives. As you can see. But uh, both of those are carbide tipped. But uh, we'll get to this one in a little bit because yeah. it's a little bit of a different knife. It's a little, a bit, better, little bit of a different knife. A Anyways, guys, this thing is pretty cool to look at. It, it's it's really, mm -hmm. really beat up. I mean, I noticed from the picture, and I'm oh, yeah. still new to my gear. Even I noticed it's like, holy mackerel, it is missing steel. It has been yes. sharpened and resharpened and resharpened. But I really loved the age of this yeah. thing, and it's a low production numbered uh, Microtech uh, SOCOM Elite. I keep wanting to call it Ultra Tech, but it's a SOCOM Elite manual action from 2006. I was like, this thing's awesome. Even though it's really beat to heck, I kind of wanted a high-end beat to heck knife. Mm -hmm. And make no mistake, some of you guys out there who are like, oh, that thing's probably worth like zero dollars because it's so beat up. <laughs> this thing is still worth quite a bit because Microtech SOCOM Elites are average around three to four hundred dollars. Something mm -hmm. this old is like, I mean, this one's no longer four hundred dollars because it's so beat up. But these things are still very expensive knives. I think I think before, before we wrap this up, the only mm. other thing I don't like about this thing besides the tip up carry is the locking mechanism. It's actually, a liner lock. the liner actually hurts your thumb. If you to deploy close a, a lot, up. if you do it a lot, it will kind of hurt your thumb. Yeah, liner yeah. lock is actually <laughs> will dig into your thumb a little bit. It and does over time, it kind of rubs it a little raw. Other but, than that, so long I, as you don't play with it too much, so mm -hmm. it doesn't have a lot of play factor in that way. But other than that, and I will say just a quick final note on this: the uh, the lockup is still perfect. There's mm -hmm. absolutely no up, down, or left, right playment in mm -hmm. that lock system. So that's a real testament yeah. to an 11 year old Microtech that's been through hell. So, <laughs> or Microtech, we think. you guys, I will. It's at least been through something. Either that but, or a really crazy abusive knife, knife beating owner. Of course, of some that's kind. what I'm saying. Like it's gone through abuse, and so Microtech, you guys make some really awesome knives that can take just insane abuse, and that's a liner lock, so not known known for being strong. So this one is my now manual um, the barrage. So <laughs> this girl carried this for all summer. That she was got my it high end beater. She got it wet inside and the spring, so in case you guys don't know, the barrage is generally a spring assist knife. And so the spring in there got rusted out. So when I took some WD-40 to clean out the pivot and make it better, cause it was running real slow. If you guys know since some of the later videos of this being featured, it was running real slow and it just was not kicking out because the general bench made spring assist or auto should kick out like that. It should kick out with a Hard lot of and force. And this thing was anemic. And so I took some WD-40 to try to clean it up, make it better, get some of the guck out of there, and it actually broke. The spring <laughs> broke. So I think I'm going to be returning this one to Benchmade for a replacement on that. Also because the but, springs are stripped, that's why I couldn't open it to clean it up. Yeah. So one of the screws is stripped. Sorry, screws, not springs. And so anyways, for now, for the moment being, this will probably return to being a spring assist. But for now, it's actually, I mean, I'll give fairness. This is a, a very very, very <laughs> smooth, very, very smooth uh, manual folder, but this is a manual Benchmade barrage. So going back to this knife, I really like it. I didn't carry it much. Oh, and now it's locking up. 
but that's the I only other issue yeah that's the flaw of this but anyways um i i didn't really carry this knife a whole lot for too long i can get it to deploy again but <laughs> i didn't really carry it a whole lot uh it was a good knife but i didn't really 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 love it the ergonomics are just fine it's overall a really good utility knife but i don't know i just ended up liking my other knives that i would get and just not really carrying this one i also after a time really disliked the spring assist because i think the spring uh it made it harder to put it away that is true. I did find that. It's actually easier to handle now that it's a manual. This was my high-end beater, you know? Um, <laughs> anyways, yes, I, I did, especially, uh, maybe that's why I thought the Gerber was such trash too, and it fell apart easily because I was just really hard on knives. I didn't really know how to take care of them as well. So I am afraid I kind of screwed this knife up and it's all my fault, but whatever. It's like I've learned my lesson but it's still a good utility knife. It's not the most pretty, it's not the most functional as you can, as you saw. It definitely locks up now, but it will probably, when it was a spring assist, it was easier to deploy, but it was harder to put away. I don't know, it, it just needs, it just needs some, um, a little TLC, but it's still a really good um, beater. So I enjoyed carrying it for all the time that I did carry it. Yeah, I also didn't like the fact that this screw on this side stripped out and it seems like the blade is overheat treated, so that was the only thing I didn't really like about it. What makes it. you say it was overheat treated? Because it's harder than heck to actually sharpen it. And oh, I, know, that is I have true. a handful of 154 CM blades on this table, like this one, this one, this one. There's probably, I think there's another one here that's 154 CM. I think. But uh, if yeah. not else, then, and I, so I have some like comparisons of sharpening things, mm -hmm. and this one is substantially harder to sharpen I than did all of that. these other ones. I haven't necessarily resharpened this one, but I have sharpened these, both of these before, and this one's substantially harder to sharpen. It holds its edge pretty good though. It does, but it is harder to sharpen. That is Anyways, true, and forget stropping, I tried. <laughs> and so now on to one of my other really favorite knives and a favorite of most people on this EDC planet is the Spyderco Paramilitary 2. And this is an awesome knife. I loved it. I got it, of course, because everyone seemed to be ranting and raving. I'm like, hey, I just want to try this thing out. <laughs> and uh, it is a really great Spyderco. This was my first Spyderco. And what really led me to loving Spydercos because it's just such a well put together knife. I loved the interesting lock. I loved everything about it. The S30V blade holds an edge really well. And uh, overall, it's just a great knife. It's, it does everything you want it to do, how you want it to do. For the most part, I will see the only problem, and this is just a running theme with all Spydercos, is the tips are just very thin and very delicate. So you don't want to do any prying or hard work with the tips because they will always snap, especially in these powder metal steels because these powdered metals are really, really, they're really, really stiff. They don't like to bend but I really love the knife. It's, it's a great knife, and it finds its way into my pocket more than other knives. So, more than other knives. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, honestly, that is true. I kind of traded up the, the Benchmade Raj, and I was going for the Sabenz, and I carried the Sabenz for a while, but next thing I knew, I was carrying the Paramilitary 2, and I'm actually really pleased with the Paramilitary military too. I saw the difference immediately between this and the Barrage. Um, it was a lot easier to handle for me, and it was easier to do everyday tasks with it and cut with it and even sharpen and strop it and other things. Um, I'm going to be running the Sintafante for a while, but I'll probably end up coming back to this puppy right here if he doesn't want to commandeer it. Probably one of my favorite worker knives, honestly. Um, I've grown really attached to it, as you can see, I kind of like my Spider Co. but this is like an exceptional. This is, this is the best of all of them, I must say, and I've been happy with it. Just been a really good knife. And I was a little bit against it at first. Like I've said, I don't like the blacked out blades, but that's pure cosmetics. It has nothing to do with the actual awesomeness that, of the This blade. one's actually pretty unique because it's a DLC finish, so the black mm -hmm. blade doesn't just wear off. It doesn't, fast. and there's no serrations. I mean, if there had been serrations on it, I would have been like, ew, yuck, yeah, I'm not gonna use it. Just like this poor thing right here. <laughs> Okay, so that's the PM2. Now on to the Riate Event Horizon, which is this knife. Now we've already discussed in another video that uh, this thing's a little bit hard to deploy when it gets cold because this thing's all metal, but this is the Riate Event Horizon and this is another pretty new addition. Um, <clears throat> overall, I really like it.
Anyways, guys, like I was saying, if I were to, it's just not my knife of choice. If I were to go for an automatic, I'd go for this one instead because it's lighter and it has a cleaner blade, even if it is cheaper. But as you guys, as I'm gonna demonstrate in a moment, these both fire about the same, so. So anyways, guys, that's, that's that. Button locks and everything. Oh my God, stop it. <laughs> but yeah, um, I'm just really not, I'm just really not um, a huge fan of the AFK. AFK. But okay. that's, that's, that's not, <laughs> That's just me. <laughs> yeah, that's not her style. So now on to my personal favorite. This is kind of like a grill knife for me too. This was a knife that I really, really wanted for a very long time. And uh, it's once again, all these auto knives, they really, free, they, they get frigid. You guys can see that on that first deploy, it actually failed to go fully into action. And it is sluggish right now because this thing is ice cold. And once again, the grease and oils that go into these autos to make them fire so fast are the same things that end up killing them in the cold. But this is a Microtech Ultra. Ultratech and uh, this is a tri-grip one. I really wanted the tri-grip because I actually am one of those weirdos that like the tri-grip but um, <laughs> not everyone does apparently but I really like this knife and uh, it's just been a grail knife for me. I really wanted an Ultratech for a very long time and I was able to get one. I was like awesome. So this is a Microtech Ultratech tri-grip. I like the tri grip more and uh, it's an OTF as well. So this is also my first OTF. I really want OTFs. She's probably gonna try and tell you a story about <laughs> an, a Benchmade yes. Infidel. But uh, I'm gonna yes. put this thing down I because other than story. this just being a really great everyday carry knife. I mean, this is one of those knives that it's, it has to be a second kind of cool for you. And I told him, I was like, I swear, if this ends up in your leg, I'm grounding you from it, wrapping you in bubble wrap, and it's going to be mine, and you're never touching it out the front ever again. Exactly. So far, he's been very good about not putting it in his leg. But um, anyways, that's the story, and it's a little humiliating, but I think even the best need to fall down a little bit. But I don't, I don't, I'm not a huge fan of the out the fronts. I mean, I think they're cool and all, but it's like they really are not functional enough for my taste. Well, I mean, besides having a glass cool. breaking in, that's kind of legit. I would really like a knife that had one of those, but, um, well, yeah, no, right, the beater. <laughs> But anyways, guys, I think it's cool, and I'm glad that he's really happy with it. And I'll keep you updated. If it, if it suddenly disappears from the face of the earth, it's because he did something stupid Probably. with it. But in fairness, he's not the only one to have done that. Um, the lady at the counter was saying people put him up to their palms, and oh, man. Anyways, guys, that's the out the front story. Yeah. So now on to another one of my favorite. These top three, no, like it's probably pretty obvious, but these top three are obviously some of my really, really favorites. Like I love most of these as well, but the next one is the also ZT the most expensive. Zero. Well, I know, all these are very <laughs> expensive. These are all like $300 knives, but this is ZT0552CF, and uh, it's a big knife. This is actually the largest, uh, excluding these knives. This is actually that one too. It's larger than that one. This is a very big knife, but uh, this is the ZT0552 and uh, carbon fiber, and it is an awesome, fantastic uh, flipper. It is just a really really smooth flipper really awesome <clears throat> knife I really like it I also one of my things that I wanted was a um, carbon fiber knife or a knife that had at least a little bit of carbon fiber on it and this one of course has a full carbon fiber scale on it so that makes it really lightweight but it also has that carbon fiber touch that I really like because personally I really like carbon fiber and so my hands are getting so cold I can't really deactivate know, these things I'm anymore. I holding them in my, in my so, sleeves. So anyways, this is a really awesome knife. It has a full titanium and then a full carbon fiber handle scales on it. And of course, once again, S35VN on the blade and just a really, really big knife. It's like tactical, awesome. Really love this thing. I've been carrying it. I haven't had it a super long time, but it's another knife that I've been carrying pretty regularly, pretty religiously. We, and, this uh, is actually our newest knife, yeah. and I thought it was cool. I actually, when, when he was able to get it, I was like, yeah, let's do it. As you guys know, we kind of like carbon fiber. Yeah. I. If I were to carry a big knife, because it is so, it's, it's kind of lightweight, it's not as chunky as like yeah. the Riate or the egg. I mean, for it being a, such a but huge knife, it is actually it's super lightweight. It's lightweight and it's slender, so if I were to carry a bigger knife, it would probably be this one. And I actually, I'm really impressed with this knife. I mean, it's 
I thought it was beautiful over the pictures I saw. It's even better in person. I am really excited to get more experience with this knife. Mm -hmm. And I know he is too. As like it is brand spanking new. We just, did we just get yeah. it in yesterday? Yeah. Yesterday. So Happy brand time. new. <laughs> but anyways, guys, this is, this is a nice little <laughs> knife. I'm really yeah. excited to get more accustomed to it. And I know mm -hmm. he is too. Um, and no. before you guys ask, it's not actually that cold outside. It's just it's we've been out really here warm. for quite a while yeah. filming, so our hands well, because I mean, of it's handling like these 30 knives. Plus. We've been doing this for 30 plus yeah. minutes, and these are a lot of these are metal. Are metal, so it so is now, getting cold. So we're gonna wrap this up here pretty so soon. So now to the classic, really expensive high-end knife, and that is the Chris Reeves knife Sabenza, large Sabenza 21. This is of course full titanium, just kind of like this one. And uh, yeah, it's been a really great knife. This is one of the knives I've had for a very, very long time. I think around three years now. And overall for the past three years, it's been a fantastic performer. The only thing, and I have to talk to Chris Reeves about this, that I don't like is the titanium tip clip bent out a little bit. So its retention is a little bit lost. And I don't really know what to do with the titanium clip. I know with these steel ones, you just like put them in a vise and you bend them back. But I don't mm -hmm. necessarily want to do that to this one because I don't know how that will work. My do the same thing but anyways this is a really awesome knife i'm putting it down because it's once again very cold just like all these others and uh just a really great knife though be careful because oh, i know have an i know stop. the only thing that was what i was going to say the only thing i dislike about this is that the frame lock does not have an over stop which means it could be bent out it and could broken be hyper extended that would not be good but other than that i mean i i haven't carried it a whole lot but i carried it a little bit and i really like it i like the blade shape i like how it cuts mm -hmm. um it's it's hefty I'm not going to deny it, but it's it's not bad it's for heavy knives. It's not as heavy as this one. <laughs> I also think it's funny, it's oh. Idaho made, which is where I just was. But this is um, a really good knife, and from what I know, it's it's pretty decent. So Pretty decent. Pretty <laughs> I'm just kidding, phenomenal. it's actually awesome. It's a I really actually good knife. do really love Love's. that knife quite a bit. Now, once again, it because it's such it's an beautiful. older knife for me, I have a lot of experience. So when it comes to these knives that I don't have as much experience on, a little bit more eager to choose these kinds of knives over that one because I've had that one for years and years. And I want to put some more use on these other knives. Anyways, guys. Hold on. Hold on. When I first yeah. met, met met Matthew, he had this knife. And so I kind of like this one the best, maybe out of all of these, because when I see this knife, I just remember when we first met and he was showing off all his knives and I was starting to really get out of the ignorance of knives. And you can shrug it off, but it's important know, to me. Right? Anyways, this is a pretty awesome knife. And I think we're gonna do the buck in the next video, right? Yeah. Because we need to wrap this up because it's been yes. running long. We're gonna be doing a part two to this, explaining, going over the folding sheath knife and then all the neck knives. So those are not the pocket knives per se. Mm -hmm. So anyways, guys, this is part one of this very long collection video, but hopefully you guys have enjoyed it. And as always guys, God bless and, and we're, we're out. out.